I have our previous examples up here when we were working with the highways. And for this one, we only did one um, logical condition. What if we want to restrain this within a range? So we'll have two logical conditions, one for the min, one for the max, and that creates this range in between. All right, so for that, what we can do is bring back what we were using and add a condition to it. So that's going to look like this. And then over here, we have a speed greater than or equal to 55. What I want to do is back that off a little bit so that we don't get 55. We'll get 65 and 75 at this point. So if I run that, we only get the two here. Now, what if we want to go a little bit further and restrict this to less than 75? So how do we add this second condition? Well, if we look at what we've done here, so we were assigning our variables h and speed out of this list. Then we have a comma conditional. All we need to do is actually add a comma conditional. So I'm gonna do less than 75 and run. So we just get the one which meets our criteria, this one here. And of course our operation is being performed. So Highway 112 ends up with 60 because five subtracted off of it. So let's look at another case here. So I'm gonna have A minus B. Um, we're gonna go ahead and create our parameter section for this. And what I'm doing is taking a list and line basically just like we did with our initial example where we had a, a straight list right inside of the parameters so there's no variables involved here or there's no variables that we need to call like we did with hwy so I'm gonna go ahead now and add a comma for this this is gonna be our second parameter and here we're gonna have a list 10 15 close that at another closing, terminate it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is basically see how does this run. So we're gonna have an A minus a B, and that should give us how many results out of this. Well, we know we're gonna have two, but what happens thereafter? Sorry, right, let's run this, and then we can talk about what's going on with the results. Okay, so the two expected here, we have five minus 10. It's gonna give you a minus five, of course. Then we have 10 minus 15, and that's gonna give you a negative five, but that's not what's going on here. We get a negative 10. So what they've done is taken the five minus the 10, you get the negative five, then five minus 15, you get the negative 10. So you work with the first element, process through everything in the list, in the second list. All right, now you move to the second element in the first list, and you process it against everything in the second list. So in this case, 10 minus 10, we get our zero. 10 minus 15, we get our negative five. So just to kind of, what does that look like? We have five minus 10 equals negative five. So that's the first element in the first list processed against the first element in the second list. Then over here we have five minus 15 equals negative 10. So the first element in the first list continue processing everything in the second list. So 15 is the last item and the five minus the 15 gives us that negative 10. Now we just have 10 minus 10 because we're moving on to the second element and process everything against the second list. So that's gonna equal the zero and finally, 10 minus 15 is gonna equal the negative five. So the second element in the first list now process whatever's left in the second list. So that's how it's done. Um, this is gonna give me a syntax error, but I'm gonna move on. All right, so now a little bit more involved of how we can work with these list comprehensions. I'm going to create a variable to hold a list and we're gonna have, again, more tuples. So let's see, I'm gonna have New York, US. We're gonna add another tuple for Los Angeles, US. 
what I'm creating is going to be a list of cities. So the city and the country, what is, and then we're going to wonder um, if we want to look at cities inside the U.S., we'll get a return on that. Cities in France, we'll get a return of that. So that's, that's how the processing of this is going to work. All right, now we have Paris, France. And then we're going to have Toronto, Canada. And finally, we're going to have Vancouver, Canada. Close, terminate. Whoops, terminate. And let's see what happens now. All right, so it looks like we're getting this error. Um, variable US is unbound. What this means is we, we have atoms. All of these right here are atoms inside of these tuples. The problem is that it doesn't want the capitalization on these. It wants these in lowercase for this second parameter. So if I go back and make some changes, we should be able to get the assignment we're looking for on these. So I'm just going to remove all these uppercase letters. I'm going to do this in lowercase because it would look weird with lowercase s, uppercase, lowercase u, uppercase s. Now do the assignment and we get our list. Okay, so let's look for United States cities in this list. So I'm going to go ahead and open up with the list. And I can add the terminator there. All right, we're just going to have C. We're just putting something inside of this C. But why, where's the operation of this? There is none. We're just going to print it out. That's all this is because we're using logical conditions. So we go on to this side. We'll create our tuples. We'll have C, US. And then over here, we're going to have our city location so our list all right so there's not much going on here it's just doing a straight match so it's just doing this pattern matching is what's happening with that and if i hit enter we get new york and los angeles so it gave us back just this c part rather than the whole tuple because again we're going in here we're saying this is going to be a variable called c this is going to be a literal match against whatever the second parameter is in the tuple. So obviously if we go back in here, change this to France, we'll get a different result. So I need to, I need to change this to French cities, for example, because we've already used that variable, French, and we get Paris. So that's a pattern match using list comprehensions. And if we want to change this, so we can take, let's see here, New York, and although there's only one, and put our C over here, and we should get US back. Whoop, so I'm doing it again. What I'm going to do is just do cities, and we get US. And again, just to kind of make that clear what's happening there because in the United States for example there's um, some cities that have the same name in multiple states so that's a case where this would produce something useful all right so we brought back New York we can have Paris I'm gonna do cities too so just again showing you can go either way with how you want this to match so initially we get back whatever the city is and so up here as well, New York, Los Angeles. Then we started working with it and get back the country just by flipping this. Pattern matching, that's what's going on right there with our literal. So there was not two variables, which is what we did in previous examples. These were both variables. One was a variable, one was the literal match that we were after inside of that list.